Hi everyone, in this tutorial, I will show you how to visualize your data using the Matplotlib package. And here we will learn the general syntax of Matplotlib and then apply them to generate any kind of plots. For example, those that are shown here. So let's open Spider. And for this tutorial, we need two packages, Matplotlib and NumPy. So input to Matplotlib package should be numpy array or the one that can be converted to numpy array object so if your data are not in numpy array please convert them to numpy array and then you can apply matplotlib to uh, visualize your data so let's if you haven't know how to install those packages please visit tutorial number seven so here i already installed so just import them and now let's create some example data x equal number I arrange. So I generate 100 number of forms, 0 to 99. And y, I also generate 100 number, uh, let's say equals to x plus number I, a, a random. And let's generate 100 random numbers and with 20. So Z, let's generate 1000 random number using normal distribution with a mean of 50, standard deviation of 10, and 1000 random numbers. Yeah. And now you can plot the data. Just create a line plot, for example. So there are many different ways to visualize data. So one of the um, most simple ways is like this. Use pipe plot and then plot x, y. And then plot show. So here, if you go to the plots panel, you will see we just created a live plot. If you want to increase the font size of X, Y title and everything in here, you can set a general setting, for example, RC parameters and your X, uh, the font size. Let's say it uh, equals 15 and execute again. F9. So here we just increase the font size. And of course, you can change the color and you can add a marker in here. For example, here, let's add a marker is star. And let's set the transparency color alpha so you can set the trans transparency using alpha for example here so now we have if you change to 0 0.7 yeah, like to 5 and then you can change the color in here c let's say i use blue and you can also add label Let's say my line. And to show the legend, you need to pipe, use pipe plot legend. Otherwise, the label will not be shown. So execute this one. So here I have a live plot with marker and a legend in here. So you can also add another line here or another dot plot. So let's use by plot to add another line. X the second line, Y time three. And you can adjust the line style. For example, if you want to use dash line, and uh, you can adjust the line width. 
let's say two, and also alpha transparency zero point five. Um, let's add another label. Another line. So now you can execute all of this. Okay, we just add another line here. If you have a solid, solid line, by default it will be solid line. Yeah. And you can also add X label, Y label, or in title, for example, using this method, I plot X label. So let's say X label. And you know, I plot a Y label. So let's say Y label. And title, I plot title. So let's say my first plot. Can also add a control something in here, for example, color, the title, font size, and others. So execute this one. And here I had a plot with X plot uh, title, Y title, and others. So we use live plot when we want to see the temporal trend in our data for example if you see the weather report you want to see the changes of temperature with time and the trend in temperature so you will use light plot and the other kind of plot is scatter plot and we use scatter plot when we want to see the correlation between uh, different variables and the scatter plot in pi uh, in using matplotlib is easy. Like you just use pi plot and then scatter x and y. And here you can also set a color s in here. For example, I want to have the alpha is zero point five, and then pi plot show. Yeah, here I just have a scatter plot. You can also change the color of the plot according to some values. So you can use color gradient, for example. I use color gradient is by Y. So we do color by the value of Y. So here I just have a color gradient in here. And you can also change the size of the uh, of the dot in here. For example, size to eighty. Sorry, yeah, yeah, eighty. Yeah, it just change the size forty. For example, smaller. And you can also change the size according to the value. For example, y also. Can add a label and so on, similar with with this one. And the other type of plot is to fill between the two lines. So this kind of plot will be used to represent the confidence interval or the uncertainty. For example, when you want to see the temperature prediction in the next one hundred year, you often see the uncertainty band. So we use the fill between two lines. For example, here I want to fill between, fill between here, x1, x, x, and I have y minus 20, let's say, and the, the upper level is y plus 20. So I want to fill between the area between the, the line y minus 20 and y minus and plus 20. And I want to fill with the color of blue. So you use color, not C. So the fill between method here, you use color, not C.
and alpha also transparency of the fill color and then of course you need to show high blood show f9 so here i already fill between two color two lights um, and you can also add for example a line in the middle in here for example it could represent the best prediction dot x y color blue so here i have a plot already and you can also show the lesson for example label let's say the mean max range or confident interval or just say uncertainty band and also the label in here as prediction and of course you need to use five lot legend to show secure so here we have the legend and the other kind of plot is histogram plot so we use the histogram plot when we want to see the distribution of our data here yeah, histogram plot so in mud plot it just you pie plot hist and here i want to show, show the histogram of set and i want to have the number of bins so i want to split the data into multiple ranges and in here i want to use like 15 ranges and execute and then you need to show yeah so you can also set the transparency of the field color and the relative width of each column in here by using this argument uh, relative width let's say 0 0.8 and alpha on waste transparency 0 0.5 yeah and now another kind of plot is stack plot stack plot so when do we use stack plot for example when we want to represent the proportion of something with time for example if you see the um, total energy production you can see in the graph you can see that the energy produced from, for example, fossil fuel or from nuclear power, or from wind energy or solar energy with time. So you just pie plot and then stack plot and then X, e, X and Y. I, I will have three lines, for example, Y and Y times two and then Y times three and then I need to have the labels labels here with S remember here is without S so my label let's say the solar energy the first line the second line let's say wind, wind energy the last line let's say nuclear power and i need to show the legend and here you have to define the legend location so let's say you upper left and then at the end you have to show the plot okay now let's execute this one so here for example we have the changes of uh, different energy sources uh, according with time let's say for example this is sol from solar energy from wind energy from nuclear power just an example so um, another kind of plot that to show the relative proportion of different things see the pi plot pi plot
so in a uh, math plot if you just use pi and uh, use pi plot pi and then let's say that i want to generate plot for the value the first three value of y four value of y sorry and label also would has here let's say a b c d and i just need to show the plot show so here i have a pie plot which show the relative proportion of the first four number in y let's see in here execute this one and here you see the value of y so in the other kind of plot a heat map plot heat map plot as the name suggests the heat map plot you can use to generate for example spatial distribution or temperature let's say or the spatial distribution of something or you can also use the correlation between multiple variables and represent the correlation as the color so here let's say uh, generate a heat map plot so in you pi plot and then p color mesh so here for example i want to generate heat map plot for the value first uh, 10 value of x x the first 10 value of x and y and so first 10 value of x so x running from 0 to 9 and y from 0 to 9 let execute this and you see here x and y and the color let's generate a random color a random number random and you need to generate 10 x 10 y so here i generate a, an array 2d array with 10 x value and 10 y value because here x i have 10 values and y here i also have 10 values and so this should be a 2d array with the size of 10 times 10 yeah and you can use the color map let's say autumn and now show the plot execute this one we well, have hit my plot if you want to show the legend you just need to hear the pie plot color bar execute again so now we have a color bar so uh, what we have done in here is actually the uh, implicit approach to plot in our implicit approach so what is implicit approach in here we have one figure for example and the figure only contains one subfigure so actually the figure could contain multiple subfigure here or multiple subplot in here for example here i can have the heat map plot and in in another in here i can have the light plot and then scatter plot and so on so here implicit approach we define the figure and subfigure directly using the high plot method so define figures and uh, subfigure in in a map plot if subfigure they call axis directly using pi plot and the pi plot is represented as plt in here axis is actually subfigure and if you see in here for example if you go to the very early version of matplotlib you will see that they define the figure here and the axis is actually a subplot 
it's not the plural form of axis in here. And axis, y axis, x axis. Now we can, uh, with the mm, implicit approach, of course, you can create a figure with multiple axes or multiple subplots. And, um, but uh, it, it just depends on you which method do you like. And in here, I will show you uh, how to use the explicit approach in the explicit approach to create figures with subfigures or axis. Explicit. So in the explicit approach, we define figure and axis in this way. Just give a name, figure, axis, and high plot, subplot. And here I want to have four subplots or four axes. Um, with number of rows, my figure should have two rows and number of columns should have two columns and my figure size should be six inches and four. So now execute this one and you need to show the plot show. We haven't added anything to the plot so it just show the empty figure with four subfigures or four axis in here and if you want to add for example stack plot to the upper left uh, axis in here you can add it by this way uh, axis you, you should assess the axis by using it index for example this should be zero zero in a similar way as we access the array number array and the upper right is zero one and the lower left is one zero and the lower right should be one one so stack block we already done so we just copy here and paste here it is the same and now execute this one now we have stack block added to the first axis we can also define the axis in this way. For example, sometimes I mix between the index in here. So I will define, for example, my axis number, let's say axis one and axis two. Here we need to have another axis, another bracket. And the second row I have axis three and i have axis four so and here i should you access the axis by name and it will show the same plot in here and for example i want to add let's say a scatter plot to the upper right so it's the name of the axis is axis two now. Get the plot we already defined here and then we just can copy it. Yeah. And now execute again. So now we, we have a scatter plot and we can also add to the lower left. Let's say we want to add a few between here just copy it we need to type again and let's say the lower right i want to have just a live plot x y color blue you can also copy from the code above so now i have four axes or four subplots defined by the explicit approach. And in some cases, for example, you want to have uh, one uh, axis in the first row and in the second row, we want to have two axes. And then we can do in this way, we use subplot Mosia. Explicit broad using subplot more saying 
So here we define figure also axis, high plot and sub plot without as mosaic. Here I need to define the array of axis name. So here, so in the first row, and then in the second row. So in the first row, my axis name is like axis one. And because in the first row, I want to have only one axis. So I use the same name axis one. And in the second row, I have two different axes, so I give it another name, two, three. So in this way, uh, subplot mosaic, we understand that in the first row, you have one single axis here, because we use the same name. And in the second row, we have two axes. And also, you can define the figure side. Figure side. Let's say we use the same size, six, four. And now you can execute this one, F9. And we can access the axis name using the same approach as before, for example here. So here we want to have, let's say stack plot, just copy the same in here. And then for the second two, we have, let's say using this. And then of course you need to change the name of this to two, three. And then we need to show the plot. And now execute this one. So we have a plot with um, one plot in the upper panel and two subplots or two axes in the lower panel. Of course, here you can change the font size using the same parameter in here or different. For example, here you can change it to, let's say 10. If you see your font size too big, you can change to 10. So oh, if you want to save your figure, you can save your figure in here. You can say as SVG or PNG. Or you can also save your figure using command. For example, here using high plot and save figure. And for example, here I want to save my figure as in this as PDF file and in this folder. So here you should put before show because if you put after it, it you should uh, just save an empty figure. So and then you execute this line F9. And then if you go to this folder, you will see that the PDF file was created. And you can also say as other file, for example, PNG you can define the resolution DPI, let's say 600. And then you can execute again. And you go to this folder, you will see that there's PNG file created. And there are so many other arguments that you can pass to the save figure method here, DPI, face, color, and other. And I will paste this link to the video description. And also, if you go to the official website of PyPlot, for example, here, you click to the example in here, and then you will see that there's many uh, plots here. You just click to the plot that you like, and you can copy the code and you adjust in the way that fits your data. So this is some of the basic thing about Matplotlib in Python.
And thanks for your attention. Please subscribe to my channel to get updated about my latest videos.